All right, I hate long intros, so let's get right into it. I'm a photographer, and I was looking into using continuous lighting to do some headshots uh, to get away from flash, which I've primarily used. So I started researching continuous lights, wanted something that would work with kind of my existing modifiers, softboxes, everything I already have. Eventually, I landed on the Godox ML60, and that's where our dilemma started. So the ML60 has the Godox mini mount, um, which also the AD300 and I think 400 Pro use as well. So I've already got a bunch of existing soft boxes that are all Bowens mount. So I thought, you know, no problem. There's, they gotta make an adapter. And sure enough, I already have S2 brackets. But the thing that was the deal breaker with the S2 bracket for me was the battery holder. So I want to be able to run these off of the NPF batteries, like so. And they've got this awesome mount for the battery pack right here. And when you use the S2 bracket, you lose that and you end up with dangling batteries or batteries I have to clip or find a way to attach the light stand and I'm not one to run an AC cord. So, yeah. If you use the S2 bracket, you lose essentially the awesome battery mount. So my solution was to look at, hey, this ML60 is supposed to be the same size as an 8300. So I looked into the options for an 8300 and landed with this adapter ring, which I'll put the number on the screen but as far as I know, no one's done this before. So I bought the the Bowens mount adapter, and then you have to also buy the insert for the AD300 to make it work on the ML60. But there's a small notch in the top and the bottom that I got to shave down with a razor blade to make it fit. But it does fit, it does work. Um, getting the uh, release levers to line up took a bit of trial and error and there's actually one two I think three springs total by the time you hook this all together so I actually took the one spring out and cut it much shorter so it wasn't you know you didn't have to grab the light with two hands to pull the spring release back so it does function it does work I'll try and get to an angle where you can see it there we go. And you can see both the pins are working off the release lever. Okay, so at any rate, that brings us to the present time. So now we've got compatibility with both the Godox mount and the Bowens mount, which is great because the Godox mount doesn't have a lot of options, and particularly for headshots, I'm looking at strip boxes. So here's a Bowens mount blow easy lock strip box which I planned on using for headshots. So now I've got compatibility with the Bowens mount for my strip box, and this works great. I just removed the Bowens mount adapter, and then here's the insert that goes inside that adapter, and here is the spring, and this connects to the switch here, just like on an 8300, and that slides that back and forth. So you've actually got and when I was talking about three springs, you've got a spring here. This is the one I shortened because this spring pushes to this spring, which pushes to the switch. Another product I looked at were the low profile speed rings for the Godox mount. And they'd simply replace this Bowens mount part with this, and then in theory, connect directly to the Godox mount on the ML60. It almost worked, except for this screw knob here that allows you to rotate the Bowens mount. Actually hits the outer part of the Bowens mount receiver here. So it almost worked. So I've still got one more idea.